Hello again guys, so the new little glider is out, the 2021 version, and it is more streamlined than the previous version. They've made some improvements to it, so the trailing edge on the main wing, as you can see, is thinner. On the fin, that is also more aerodynamic, and the tailplane, they've also made the trailing edge on that thinner and more aerodynamic. So the wings are semi-symmetrical look, so that's a lot more aerodynamic than the uh, previous version. Okay, there is a slight difference in the fact that there's this locking mecha mechanism that they've done, or the embossed part they've done in the centre, whereas the original one was one continuous flow. Okay, the other difference is that the fuselage is thicker, which is uh, good for getting batteries and radio gear in, and the tailplane is also thicker because that was a weak point. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're revisiting this, I'm going to do a version that you may have seen before, but I'm going to do exactly the same so that we can see the difference in flight performance between the old version and the new version. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing this again is the picture on. Okay, so no doubt some of you will have seen uh, this version before. I've done some years ago. A very simple conversion in the fact that it's the wings that just tilt to control the aeroplane and all the radial gear is just con conveniently cut out and put into the front. So there's not a lot of work to do. All, the only cutting out to do is at the front end, and that is for the receiver and the battery. And uh, if I turn this over, that's where the servos are mounted. So there's not a great deal of work to do at the back or on the wings or anything like that. So I'm going to do that one. As you can see, that's the old version. See how thick the trailing edges are? It wasn't that streamlined, although it did fly, and it was a great ship to get learning how to do gliding on. So. I'm going to make a start on uh, the new version and the first thing to start with will be in the fuselage because that's where the cutting out is going to be and that's where the radio gear is going to go. So I'm just going to make some cutouts now and widen that for the receiver, make a small cutout there to accept the battery, cut out for the servos so join me shortly and we'll have already have cut that out. Okay guys so before I start work on the uh, fuselage what other bits are you going to need? Well, you're going to need a radio system, any radio system that you can have a small receiver with. This is a FR Sky and a Jumper T Light, but anything that's capable of operating on a small receiver. Okay, you're going to need two nine gram servos. You're going to need a battery, whether that's a small NICAD battery or a LiPo. Now, a LiPo battery and a battery eliminating circuit like this one, it will probably be easier to get hold of nowadays. And maybe a bit lighter than the battery unless you can get some small batteries okay you're also going to need a heat gun a glue gun okay Let's glue bits and pieces together and you're going to need some way of making the uh, pivot which is this here and it's nine inches long okay and we'll just measure that you don't need a great deal so there you go nine inches long and in centimeters that's 24 centimeters long Okay, so you need to divide a plastic tube or some form of tube into three to, to go over that. Okay, so I'm just going to show you here. I have a carbon tube, okay, and that is uh, six mil in diameter. Okay, in the end, I've glued a bolt with a washer on, and that's glued on to stop that this plastic bush going over it. So you need to find a plastic tube that will go over it. Okay, that's a fairly snug fit, or anything that will go over it that's not going to ruin or degrade this part. Okay. You need a washer on, another washer, okay, my plastic tube that goes on to make up the nine inches. And that's so that all the separate parts will twist and turn independently of each other. Now, you can glue a bolt and a washer on the end if you have. If you're not, maybe you've got the electric propellers and you've got these bits left over. And maybe you're lucky enough to find one of them that will just slot over the end and you can glue that on the end. All it's for is just to make sure that these don't come off, okay. Maybe carbon tube you haven't got hold of, maybe steel wire. Okay, steel wire and a brass tube, that will work just as well. Only you can't put a bolt on the end, so just wrap some wire and solder that on the end and that will stop it coming off the end, you can do that. Or if you really have plenty of uh, carbon tube, maybe two carbon tubes, okay, one that will slide inside the other, like that, okay. Or maybe a carbon tube with a plastic drinking straw, anything really that's not going to bind it's going to allow it to turn okay so you'll, you'll need to find that in order for it to work some way of producing that okay 
Uh, these are little collets I have uh, got from the servos. You don't have to use them, I'm going to show them later. And a little bit of wire to make the connection rod. Okay, and also some thin drinking straws. Okay, so I'll show more on that later. But now I'm going to start work on the uh, fuselage, cutting that out. So I'll see you in the next clip. Okay, so <coughs> need to mark and cut out a slot in the front of the fuselage to accept two servos and a little recess. Okay, now your servos you need to slot in. Now I've recessed mine back a bit to give it a little bit more aerodynamic so that when the wind's blowing it's not on that bit, it gives it a bit more secure when I glue it in. But to make sure that my arm doesn't foul up on any part of it there, I need two servos in obviously. That wire on the way. That wire in there. Okay, so you need to make sure that your two servos are in with the spindle part at the furthest rear point, okay? Now you don't have to recess it if you don't want to, but you would have to widen the centre section of your wing to accommodate that, okay? So I have a gap at the back there now where the wires can go. So I now need to make a hole through for servos cables to come into the cockpit area. Okay, so don't glue them in yet. Obviously need a hole connecting from there to the centre of there. Now I'm going to use a brass tube, you can drill it, do what you want. I like to use my brass tube method, so I'm going to do that now. Okay, so I've got a piece of brass tube which I've sharpened up and uh, that will allow me to get my cables through. Okay, so I'm going to just make a hole from here to join up there. Okay. it's quite easy to do plugging it back up <laughs> there it goes okay so there's my hole through so now I can glue the servos in but not just yet as you see now as I push that cable it comes straight out there don't forget the arms are going to be going that way when you insert it okay so now I need to make a space here for the battery not a great deal. Okay, so I'll uh, put my battery over there. I'll draw a line around it and I'll start cutting that out. Okay, I'll clear my desk off and we'll see you in the next clip. Okay, so now I've got a slot out and a gap out for the battery. Okay, so I'm going to be using a light on a battery eliminator. So this is the battery eliminator. I've just cut a slot out for that and that will slot into there. I don't need to keep it big space. I want to keep it as much foam there because that will help protect it. Okay. And my battery will just sit on top. And it's a 300 milliamp 2S LiPo. So there you go. That's all fit on there. Now all I need to do now is route the wires through for the servos, glue the servos in place and then cut a hole in the cockpit for my small receiver. And then all the uh, cables will plug on. And being the receiver and being in that position. Okay, so I'll uh, get back to you in two minutes when I've done that. I'm just going to glue the servos in place now and feed the cables through. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay then, so I've hot melt glue the servos into position. Okay, like that, so that's the radio gear mainly done. So that, there's this big channel out for the uh, battery eliminator back okay 
and there's some space to put the extra cables so that will slot in there the battery cable can slot like that my IPO can sit like that okay batteries in position obviously two wires from the servos need to be connected to the receiver along with the power cord from the battery eliminator okay and they need to be fitted into the cockpit area okay now the cockpit area I've got space out for my receiver okay use the wire to poke a hole through that drinking straw I can now push through that hole okay I can now I've pushed it through the hole I can chop that off I can put the connect the wires onto there yeah, they all go in there those wires on there are nice effects so I'm going to just chop that off now so I'll just feed the tube through for the aerial chop the extra off there you go keep that because I'll be showing you what we'll be using that for later on so now you'll need to work out where your cables need to go Oh, another good thing with these little ones is use some hot milk glue on the aerial so that it doesn't break off so that's been glued in there and around the, the wire so that will help keep everything in place and obviously your servo positions and cable positions will differ with yours so it's a case of push that into there that into there okay there's my little aerial and uh, this has got that on there so those need to be out the way well let's take the battery out the way first okay so the excess wire that gap that I made can go in there I'll show it in there like that okay put that on top battery goes on That squeezes in there as well. You would connect your battery on. It's all fitted nice. Yeah. You could put an elastic band around there if you wanted to keep that tight. Okay, so now that the servos are glued in position, you need to measure where the control arms are going to go. Okay, so there you go. You need to measure them like that. Yeah. Now you can transfer that to the wing and to this because this will need cut into that length. You see my centre section is slightly bigger so I need to cut a bit off that. Okay. Alternatively you could just slide the wing in. Okay there we go. And uh, mark the pen where those points are yeah because that's where we're going to be having a control rod going up and down so that's where the join of the wing needs to be so I need to slice that wing now and I need to get my connecting rod in okay so I shall uh, get on with that okay so I've now marked up on the wing where I want to put my connecting rod which is 80 mils from the trailing edge so I'll measure from the trailing edge 80 millimeters. So I'll measure from the trailing edge 80 millimeters. Okay, which is from there and from there. Okay, um, I'm going to be using the hot iron method this time because some of you may find this a bit easier than trying to use a brass tube. Okay. So. You need, the metal, you need the metal edge, okay, I've set the depth of the tip to 20 millimetres so that when I line it up against the edge like that, I can't go any deeper than that edge, okay. So here goes guys, don't know how well this is going to go for me, but we'll give it a go. Remember, keep your fingers well out the way, this is a bit hot. Mm. 
There we go. Oh, there's my groove in. I now just need to put the iron in. Oh, I've not got it quite to the edge there. Let's just straighten that up. That'll do. All right, I'll go and put this iron away. Be careful of these fumes. I was doing a ventilated room, okay? Or outside is preferable. Right, okay, so now that uh, we've hot melted a groove in there, 18 mil from the trailing edge, check the depth is equal, okay? So that's what you, you want to build. Now the depth here is set to 15 millimeters. So it's 15 millimeters deep on the wing. Obviously that's going to be thicker. So you'll have to make that thicker, okay? And test fit it a few times to make sure that it, it fits in okay. Mark up your center on your center rod, okay? Because you'll be lining that up with that you may have more of a gap on one side than the other okay then it's a case of put three spots of hot melt glue in the center the center and the center and then you can squeeze that into place okay so get yourself a flat bladed screwdriver like that so that you can ease it into position as well so I'll put some hot melt glue in so in the center there some in the centre there, and some in there. And so I put a felt tip marker on the centre there, so I'll line that up with the centre of the wing and push it into position with my flat bladed screwdriver. Right, and make sure you get these as level as you can. Check your depth again. Okay. So that looks about equal to me. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'll put some more hot melt glue on here. Okay, so the next part we need to do is when that's dry is cut the wings free when I put the uh, washers. Okay, so I'll uh, come back to you in a bit when I've done that. Okay, so now that the wings have got the spar glued in, okay, we need, need to cut them free. Okay, so where your washer is, where your divide line is, we need to cut it. So get a steel ruler that is flexible enough to flex around and, and do it 90 degrees or as near as you can. 90 degrees to the metal the rod that you've got in there and use a sharp knife to cut it in so here goes try and keep your cutting blade at 90 degrees as well okay so you've got a nice cut but we will need to sand this later because we'll need this gap making sure it lines up on the other side because now I have to go over the top of the original cut and join it like that okay there you go you see it now works but we're very tight so all I need to do now is get some sandpaper in there and sand that free but basically it's nearly all done now so the other thing we need to do now is put pivot point in there and that's what the drinking straws are for okay so I'll sand this up and then I will come back to you later okay okay so now that the pivot 
control arm is glued in place we need to measure 30 mil from the leading edge back because that's why we need our anchor point okay or alternative to that make sure that it lines up with this point here on your servo so it may be slightly more or less but for me it is 30 mil okay from the leading edge so i've made a mark roughly in the center of the wing the 30 millimeters from the leading edge and i'm going to make a hole for our control rod Okay, so I've made a hole and I need approximately 30 millimeters of this drinking straw. So, 30 millimeters. Put that off and we insert that into a hole like that. Okay, now that fits fine. I'll get that out, I'll put some glue in there and that'll be make a solid anchor point. I now need to do that on this side. So roughly 30 mils back, measure your sensor mark. Make a hole. 30 millimeters of drinking straw. I'm going to do it with that end because I've got a point on my end. Just makes it easier for going in if it has the point on it. need a bit deeper on that sometimes the foam compresses sometimes it just pulls out it depends how delicate the foam is and we're nearly there but not quite this one's proven to be a bit more awkward isn't it What's happening is it's not making a space, it's just pushing back. There we go. It does not want to go in that one. Okay, and also, when you do your hole, make sure it's 90 degrees that way and 90 degrees that way. Okay, so now I'm going to make up some small metal rods, basically with one bend in it, a 90 degree bend, so it'll go in there and come down that way. Right, so I'm going to make them, I'll show you the next part of the build, and we're nearly finished now, guys. Okay, so next, I've bent some thin wire at 90 degree angles, two pieces, and 25 mil long on that section. I'm not worried about this depth at the moment because we'll be fitting that and cutting that to size when we've got it in the uh, wing. And now I super glued those in, plug position, and uh, they're ready to go in now. So what I'll do now, slide the wing in. Now obviously you, you can glue this section in if you want, or just slide it in, it's up to you. It depends how tight your fit is. Mine's very tight, so I'm confident that mine is not going to come loose during flight. Okay. There we go. So I'll centre that up. Oh, there's my line there. Okay, so that's now back in position. I was now tilt, but they need the arm in. So, you can see what I've done here. I've had these little connectors on here, but I'm going to need to make a space out, okay, because the maximum up they go at the moment is there. 
and the reason why I haven't left it till now is because I need to have it in position before I know where I can cut it. Okay, that's not quite lined up. Okay, so now I'm going to cut a little space out here. Now the other section I need to do is for the arm itself. Now see I've got plenty of up there. Okay. Right, so now it's a case of getting these rods in position. Okay. So you slide it in there like that. Oh I need an Allen key. Just one moment while I go and get my Allen key. Okay, I'm back. I've got my Allen key. So the Allen key to open up this hole and slide into the air. If you've measured it right, there we go. All right, center it up center. Now I can adjust, the beauty of this is I can adjust it later. So I will do that when I've got my radio gear powered up. Okay, so as you see there now, that adjustment can be more or less so that I can get the wing central. Okay, like that. Yeah. So when I've got that in a neutral position, I'll put my uh, wing in the neutral position and then I'll lock that allen key up and then I can cut the extra off Okay, so I just need to do the same on this side And uh, do it this way It's just a bit easier than trying to fiddle about doing up all the different bends you needed to get in there I've got a very long rod on this one so I'll have to do it that kind of way. Maybe not. Get it in. Slide it into there. Like that. Put that back in the neutral position. I have a lot to go off there. Well, it's just to show you. I'll cut more off later, but for now, let's just chop it there. God knows where that went in the workshop. Okay, so there we go. That is the simple installation. All we need to do, slot the tailplane in, and there we have a remote control glider. Just need to set it up onto the radio and program it up. Nice and simple conversion. All right, so I will see you in the next one when I'll show you how to set up the controls and how the controls work on this plane. So, see you in the next clip. Okay, so we're finished. Okay, so now that the model is finished, okay, I've put some stickers on the top of the wing 
and I've put some stickers on the bottom of the wing to hide that uh, cut that we did for the wing spar. Okay, so that will hide that. I've also marked up my CG point. So from the leading edge here, I measured 50 millimeters between 50 and 55 millimeters back. And that's where I've done my mark. And that's where it should balance. So when I say balance, hold your finger and thumb like that. Okay, and place them under the wing. Okay, and it should balance level like that. Okay. Where it balances, it should be between 50 and 55 millimetres back. So as you can see now, that's where the mark is. Okay, so now that we've got that done, right, the next thing we need to do is set up the radio in uh, Delta configuration so that it will fly as intended. So, for the model to move up, okay, or to climb, okay, both the trailing edges should go down, okay. For the model to dive, okay, both trailing edges should go up. And to do a right roll, okay, the right wing should go up and the left wing down so that will give us a roll to the right okay and to roll to the left obviously the opposite applies the left wing should go up whereas the right wing goes down and that will give us a left roll and obviously mixing in the elevator will also give us a climb as well as roll so there we go guys that's it it's complete we're there we're done so hopefully the next time we'll get to see this fly will be on the hills unfortunately it's raining at the moment so and maybe a bit of a wait on and I want to see if there is a big difference between this version and the old Mark 1 version so see you in the next video guys